Rodgers. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. I'm going back to you. I'm going back to you. 45 to Mark. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Right back to him on first down. Bulldozes past him. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. Now look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. And yeah, this is going to be a Panthers first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. So, Charles, you talk about this head coach and his future with this franchise. Uh, look, it's been a frustrating year, and I think we saw some of that frustration boil over at his weekly press conference earlier in the week. Yeah, he's trying to say all the right things, isn't he? But he's heard the rumors. He knows what's going on out there. And right now, he is tired of having to answer the question, are you on the hot seat in every meeting with reporters this week? He kind of said, I've had enough, and I don't blame him. He looks like a guy that may very well be out the door. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. Eluding the pressure right. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Well, let's give some credit to the defense. They did a nice job there as they flushed him to his right. But he is able to buy some time, extend the play, and turn it into a short gain. Out of the pistol, McCaffrey. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air, escaping the pressure right. And this pass broken up. The contact well timed there, and now fourth down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. He'll drop to throw. And this is caught. He hits more. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for the first down. And that's 
a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense. They can't get the stop here. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Dancing to his left. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. A great play there. His first touchdown of the new season. And the Panthers take it right down and score on the opening drive. The extra point up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. The last run got six, now second and four. A give to Jones. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. After the run by Jones, here's first and 10. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Well, the Jets sweep. This is Godwin. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Second and two. Now they'll 
They'll switch it up here and look to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looks like a Buccaneer was able to corral it. Yes, the Bucs have it. Tampa Bay keeps the possession. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage. But I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. And now some disagreement down on that sideline. The red flag is out, and we're going to get a challenge. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession with football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. It's a gain of nine, but it's also going to mean a punt here on their opening drive. And in their own territory, needing only a few inches, they're going to line up to go for this thing on fourth down. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. But when you do call quarterback sneak, you don't mind if your quarterback's a little bit on the vertically challenged side, do you? Because he's just going to hide behind his big guys up front and be able to surge forward and pick up the first down. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Back to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. I don't see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And for a second straight play, just nowhere to go thanks to this Carolina defense. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Complete to Scott Miller. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. Just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Taken in at the 11. 31 yards on the punt there. And the Panthers will take over now first and 10. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Now, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game. But I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra injury. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice. But at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. The 
They go play action here on first down. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. Two minutes gone by second quarter. Now they try the right side here. And a good game here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. What a dimension this man brings to this defense. He had his mind set there that he was going to get in and make that tackle. He really flew to the football. And on an RPO, everything happens so fast. And as a defender, you can't get stuck trying to figure out what's going on. That time he had it figured out in a flash, and he was able to make a beeline to the receiver and make the play. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Well, the spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. Second and goal from inside the five. He's going to try and do this himself. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Boy, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. So they're back at the seven now for third and goal. On play action, they'll throw. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. A great effort there. There to make the grab. And the Panthers add on to their lead. No problem there on the extra point. And it's now 14 to nothing. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Pulls it in at the 13. And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. The Bucs offense set to begin their next possession. They're staring at a two-touchdown deficit, 14-0 to score as they regroup with first and 10. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by J.C. Horn. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. That's not one that he's going to want to remember, but he had to get it out of the way at some point, his first career interception. And if he's the guy that they think he is, he's not laughing it off but he's also not going to let it affect him as the game proceeds. He's going to go back out there, still be the same confident kid, the reason that they drafted him, and go out and play. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. So mark off the yardage for roughing the passer. And I've seen this before on a screen pass. Not only are you rushing the passer, you're rushing him deeper than normal. 
and I think a little frustration kicks in at the end. You're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't. So now a fresh set of downs, first and ten after roughing the passer. Back to throw here. And now they're inside the ten as he's brought down at the nine. Three yards the gain there, second down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeout. So as they take it over, we step aside. It's second and seven from the nine. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. A great play there. With two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Panthers are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Rohrwasser on for the PAT. And it is now 21 to nothing. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action. I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Out of the pistol, the give to Jones. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Out of the gun now on third down. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Now a play fake here on first down. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Now left side on the swing pass. 
They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Back to throw again. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And they'll let one go deep for Howard. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. O.J. Howard, 37 yards. And the Bucs are able to cut in now to that deficit. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And the lead will be cut down to 14. And following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now. We'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. And some space here. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. 90 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. You got nothing to win. You got nothing. Check 26, check 26. Kill, kill, kill. Turn up. Kill, kill, kill. Turn up. Now this time he'll look to throw. Sliding out of the pocket. And he wisely will throw that one away. You know, if following up on this head coach and the pressure that he is under, CD, I want to switch it to you because you've been on winning teams, but I know you've been in similar situations too where things just are not going well. How do you approach that as a player? It's a tough approach, Brandon, because you actually have to do the opposite of what you would think. You know, in your mind, you're thinking, I redouble my efforts, I go harder. In a sense, you have to back off a little bit. You have to do a little bit less do what you're supposed to do, but don't take on the pressures of doing more and trying to do your teammates' jobs as well. If you do that, that's really going to lead you to more issues. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. If you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Get ready, get ready, get ready. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Quick hitter here, it's complete. A gain of six there on first. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Four yards remain for second down. Under 10, under 10, 10. 
They'll drop to throw. Toward the sideline, he will have the first down. Good catch, he was able to keep the feet in bounds. zone now they'll look to throw he's got a man it's his tight end that's complete that catch good for only a couple I just make this one simple could he be any more open than he was on that play yeah, they lost him going to the outside hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap who's got who what what defense you're in that was totally a blown coverage throw again flush to his right to the goal line but it's incomplete that was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage but what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them and I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete they'll roll him out right and this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. Rohrwasser's kick is good. And they will open things up a bit more. It's 24-7. to so a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. It's a squibber picked up around the 27. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. One second, all that remains. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And a six-yard gain gets them right around the 43. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. So after a very one-sided first half, what will the second half bring as we are back underway on EA Sports? And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball to the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. And just a yard to go here on second down. He'll look to throw. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been many. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. 
Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. He'll look to throw. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That's a nice play there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. Touchdown! Amari Cooper from six yards away. And the Bucs are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You could say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're sitting. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they finally get him, but not before he reaches the 33-yard line. A big play there for Carolina. Well, you had all halftime to think about what you wanted to do to start the second half, and they came out with a big one. Does that not beg the question? What was happening in the other locker room at halftime? Was that the one play they didn't cover as a possibility? Because they just gave up a big, big game. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Decided to hand it off that time on the run-pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice, steady gain. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And bulldozing his way through. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Here we go. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down.
And a quick throw here. That's complete. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Rohrwasser's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So three points in uh, response there to that opening touchdown of this third quarter. And that's an important three, both in terms of adding to your lead, but also letting the other guys know you're not going to just come out in the second half and take over. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minutes. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Off the option, it's Jones. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And that will be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one will be touched down inside the 40-yard line. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. And he'll give it here to his running back. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Second and two. Oh, well, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big, bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. And he is going to have a Panthers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. Taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And a nice run. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 14. 
Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And to give this time to the tailback. Well, oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. And we'll begin it with a field goal try here. Rohrwasser's kick is good. And that will swell the lead to 16. So all things considered, that's not the final nail, but it does make things exceedingly difficult now on the other side. Yeah, because obviously now with a 16-point game, the other guys don't need just two touchdowns. They need a couple of two-point conversions as well. Plus, they'll need either a turnover or an onside kick in there somewhere. So you're just adding to the list of things that need to happen in sequence. And it's going to be a pretty tall order this late in the game. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. The Bucks on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. That'll be caught. It's the tight end, Howard. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. They find some open field here. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. We know play callers can be very creative in this game today, but sometimes when they've got receivers with speed like this, they don't need to design incredibly complex calls. Sometimes it's just get the ball in his hands and let him do his thing. In a sense, no, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the five. And a great return as he takes this up just shy of the 45. That, Charles, the first interception he's thrown here in year number two. And I know it's just the first one, but didn't it feel like what we saw from him last year where he was plagued by this type of a play? And they thought that, you know, over the offseason, going into a second season, some of that would go away. Thus far, still looks a lot like his rookie year. The carry here for the big tight end. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 
Well, I'm sure he likes this performance a little bit better than last week. He had the three interceptions here, none in the fourth quarter, and he's got his guys in front. Guaranteed he put in a tremendous amount of work this week, but maybe the matchup is just better for him. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. It's almost like those golfers. Certain courses fit their eye, and they like what they see, and other courses, as soon as they tee it up, they know they have no shot. Maybe that's the difference for him. A big yes. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They've been trying and trying, but they haven't sacked him yet. He's been able to get away and make plays. Tried to make another one downfield right there, but to no avail. They'll have to keep up the pursuit, though, and not let him get hot. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take this one down to the 36. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Speed is the name of the game when it comes to RPOs, and sometimes you can be a little too quick, thus inaccurate, incomplete. Rohrwasser's kick is good. And that will make this now a 19-point advantage. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And the complexion of this one has really changed a fair amount. That last field goal makes it a three-score game, so they need points in a hurry with time dwindling in the fourth quarter. Two yards the gain on the key. Second down. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A big play there. 76 yards. And the Bucs have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. So the extra point good, and the roughing call going to move the ball out to the 50 for the kickoff. And I think this is a good chance to pin them deep if you can land the kickoff inside the five-yard line or so. Gain some field position for your defense. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it. They do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. 45 yards on the ground for him so far. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. 
And he'll give it here to his running back. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. He'll drop to throw. Flushed out right. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a... And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. 22 yards, and the Panthers have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. Extra point safely through, and that will make this a 19-point game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now back to throw. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. And a really unbelievable play there on fourth and long. So on fourth down, a big-time completion. And the defense, they've got to be shaking their heads right now. Not only shaking their heads, but understand that they committed one of those cardinal sins. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great effort there with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Bucs are able to close the gap just a bit. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And it looks like the Panthers' hands team does its job. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Hey. 
And they take a knee. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, 